Hello! This video is part two in my deep dive into the filter on the matriarch. It's going to be another long one, so I've decided to split this video into two parts. Part three will be out in a few weeks. As mentioned, this video is pretty long, so I'll put an index in the description if you want to skip to the fun parts. This video is mostly patch tutorials and patch ideas, but there is a bunch of theory I forgot to talk about last time. There's a giant section on simple classic synth patches to demonstrate the basics of how to sculpt a sound with a filter. Uh, then there's six or seven more involved patch tutorials after that. But I'm going to start by clearing up something I mentioned in the first video, the behavior of the filter CV inputs when patched separately, which of course was clearly explained in the excellent manual that Moog included with the Matriarch. But before any of that, here's a short sample of the patches we'll be working on in this video. As mentioned in part 1, cutoff controls VCF2, spacing controls VCF1. Both knobs are DC coupled, or in regular English, tied together uh, at all times. These knobs always maintain their function no matter what is patched where. If something is patched into VCF2 CV in, whatever source you've patched will affect the cutoff of filter 2 only. However, if you patch into VCF1 CV in, it will affect both filters. Cutoff 1 is DC coupled to cutoff 2. For independent control of both filters, you need to patch into each CV input. Okay, let's put the theory to the test and try this out. I've got both filters patched directly out to my interface into a spectrum analyzer so we can see as well as hear what's happening. I'll turn up resonance, a bit of noise, so we can see and hear the filter. Use spacing to lower the cutoff of filter 1 so we can see them both clearly. Okay, I'll patch an LFO into cutoff filter 2 CV input. Yep, works. Only filter 2 is being modulated. Okay, let's try filter 1. Yeah, again it works. Both filters are being modulated, so cutoff 1 is DC coupled, normaled, or in plain English, linked to filter 2, if filter 2 is unpatched. And with two different LFOs patched into each filter, we can see we're getting independent modulation. And again, it works as it's supposed to, so glad I cleared that up. Let's expand on some of the concepts I showed in the last video. Uh, last time I talked about and demonstrated the filter cutoff and modes of the filter, but didn't get too much into how to use the filter or what is happening to the sound wave itself when it's being filtered. So. If we want to understand how a filter works, we should probably also understand a little bit about the source we're trying to filter. 
Okay, let's take a look at some of the sound waves. We'll look at the shape of the wave, that's where they get their names, uh, on an oscilloscope, and we'll take a look at the harmonic content in a spectrum analyzer. I've got the spectrum analyzer on super sensitive mode, but you'll still be able to see that the triangle wave has much less harmonic content compared to the next couple of waves. It's a sawtooth wave. There's a pulse. There's a narrow pulse. So as you can see, each of those waves had a strong fundamental and a combination of different harmonics at different levels. The fundamental, the lowest and the largest frequency bump, in simple terms we'd just call it the root or the pitch of the note, and uh, the harmonics, um, all the other lines we see, are the, uh, the color or the brightness of the sound. In subtractive synthesis, as I mentioned last time, we use a filter to remove or in some cases accentuate harmonic content. So, we usually want to start with a wave with a lot of harmonic content. That means there's a lot more material to work with and easier to create different sounds. That's why almost every subtractive synth will have a saw and a pulse wave, and most now also have triangle waves. Uh, as we saw, triangle waves have much less harmonic content, but still sound great. In additive synthesis, or West Coast synthesis, they do the opposite. They start with a sine or a triangle wave, something with a lot less harmonic content, but they add their harmonics through techniques like FM, frequency modulation, or wave folding to produce the desired tone. So back to our filter. The cutoff of the filter is the frequency at which the attenuation begins. Different filters have different slopes. Last time we saw that the matrix low pass is a 24 dB slope. And like we saw in the last video, resonance adds a peak at the frequency cutoff. When we alter the cutoff, we're attenuating uh, with the filter or accentuating with resonance different harmonics and altering the sound. Let's try this by creating simple classic synth patches, uh, the kind you used to find in old analog patch books like clarinets and violins and flutes that didn't really sound like the real thing, but ironically, they're really popular now in modern music. Anyway, these are great patches to use to learn about synthesis. Okay, first step is to patch the synth in mono like I showed you in the last video. Perfect. Okay, we're going to start with the saw wave. And we're going to try to make something that sounds kind of like a violin. Okay, so I'm going to turn up resonance. And now you can see our cutoff is emphasizing certain harmonics as well as cutting some of the higher ones. So for a violin sound, I think it sounds best if we get the cutoff around the fifth or sixth harmonic and use a bit of resonance to emphasize the cutoff and that harmonic. Use a sine LFO to modulate the cutoff for some vibrato. And I know it's not true to a real violin, but let's add a little bit of release. I guess you could be playing in a hall. And I'll add in a second oscillator to thicken up the sound. Narrow pulse wave. That's more violinish. I detune it, I can get a bit of chorusing. Maybe two violins playing in unison. You can see the envelope sweep the filter. Sort of like the bow on the string. Might be a little too much resonance for a realistic violin, but pretty good. Okay, let's add in oscillators three and four. Put the uh, Moog in paraphonic, duophonic mode. And now we've got a string section. That actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, a nice super simple patch that demonstrates how with just a little bit of filter modulation we can get maybe not the most realistic string section, but certainly a very musical, usable patch. All right, let's reset our filter and try out another patch. This time I'm gonna use a pulse wave and I'm gonna go for a clarinet sound. All right, there's a pulse wave, a rectangular wave, or square wave, whatever you wanna call it. As you can see, the even harmonics are really pronounced while the odd harmonics are very attenuated. Remember, if we keep the filter fully open at 20,000 hertz, adding resonance will attenuate the low frequencies. So we can see how that affects the harmonics as well as the fundamental in this case. Okay, let's use the filter to try to accentuate the uh, first harmonic. There we go. You see what happens? We get almost a triangle wave from our pulse wave. Cool. 
Okay, but for a clarinet sound, I'm going to go for the uh, second harmonic. Get a more tubular sound. Okay, we're on the right track. It sounds kind of uh, like a clarinet or a recorder. Add some envelope. The envelope is really where these sounds usually fall apart. I'll go for an air attack, like a swell or a crescendo. That's cool. More of a recorder than a clarinet, but I'll take it. See what happens if we emphasize that first harmonic instead. Oh, we should add key tracking. Now, if we turn up the resonance more, we can get kind of an ocarina or an accordion type sound. Nice. <laughs> cool. Okay, since we got an ocarina, we might as well try for an organ. Getting a bit off topic here, but oh well. Put it back into four voice mode. Set all oscillators to pulse waves. I want to alter the pulse width of each wave somewhere between the uh, two waves selectable on the matriarch. So I'm taking a wholesome malt cable out of the attenuator and patching into the malt and pulse width CV in on all the oscillators. We need the malt cable so we can get all four oscillators. All right, so this attenuator is acting as a DC offset so we can alter our pulse width. Sounds good there. Okay, back to the filter. I'm going to use resonance to cut the lows and bring out some of the highs. That's nice. Okay, going for a clicky organ sound, so we're going to use lots of envelope. I've got the sustain up pretty high on the envelope. You can see how it's really affecting the highs. Okay, I don't want that though. I want to make a clicky organ, so sustain at zero and the shortest possible envelope we can get. Just a bit of decay. Great, a pretty cool clicky organ, kind of like an old Casio or Yamaha Porta sound. Cool, but no organs complete without a Leslie, so let's patch in some VCA modulation. So I'm gonna patch the sine LFO out into a malt. Just make sure all my other modulations turned off for now. Okay. Out of the molt, we're going to go into an attenuator. And again, out of the molt into this other attenuator. And from both attenuators going into the VCA CV input. I want my tremolo to be in stereo, so one attenuator will be in positive values and one will be in negative. Oh, need another cable. There we go. Okay, fast tremolo. Slow down the wave a little bit. Add a little bit more BCA modulation. Great, sounds good. Clicky organ with the Leslie. If we put it into duophonic mode, we can get an organ with chorus. Nice. Back to four voice. Okay, back to our filter work. Let's take a look and see what we can do with the triangle wave. Okay, just like the other patches, I'm going to use cutoff and resonance and target a specific harmonic. In this case, I'm going for a flute sound, so once again, probably the second harmonic will be best. And I'm going to reset the envelope and turn on some key tracking. Okay, in all the old patch books where they tried to duplicate woodwind sounds, they'd always add noise to try to simulate blowing. So I'm just going to global settings here and going to alter the noise filter cutoff with a high pass filter so there's a little less lows in my flute player's breathing. Let's see what this sounds like. Great. That's a pretty good flute.
Okay, let's quickly um, patch up some VCA modulation for some vibrato for our flute player. Just patching sine wave out into an attenuator and from there into the VCA CV input, just like we did before for the organ, except in mono this time. Great, good synthy flute. Okay, let's put these silly patches aside and take another look at the filter and how to sculpt our sound. So just got a saw wave up. It's such a smooth filter, so great. You can just see those harmonics fall away. Getting almost a triangle away from our saw. If we add resonance, we can sweep our harmonics and get a totally new sound wave. That's how we get a saw triangle. You could get that on the um, old Oberheim synths. Let's try a little less envelope. There we go. Okay, let's see what we can come up if we use a little bit of FM. So we'll use oscillator 4 to modulate oscillator 1. Turn up the frequency of oscillator 4. Switch to a saw. Let's open the filter for a second. And there we go. We can get a chip tune or Atari style pulse sound. Now, off track again, we're not really using the filter at the moment to get this sound. But it's still a pretty cool sound. Check out the weird harmonic structure of this wave. Okay, this video is supposed to be about the filter, so let's get that back into play. Actually, but first I'm going to change my um, modulating oscillator a bit. Go for something with a lot of harmonic content. We'll go with the pulse wave. Get something really ugly. Okay, so this sound by itself is probably not that usable. So let's see what we can get if we try to filter out some of those highs. That's kind of cool. Let's add some envelope. Yeah, I might use that. Not that, but that's okay. All right, let's get on to some real patches. Okay, I've got this beautiful warm pad patch going. Sounds absolutely fantastic on its own. Uh, but let's get a groove going and hear how it might sound in context. sounds good and I love the sound of the patch on its own but if I was going to mix this I'd probably have to do some heavy EQing to make this sit right. Now in most patches I'm going to use some reverb to uh, give the synth some space and create an ambiance. Something like this beautiful sounding Lexicon Hall algorithm. But you can hear the pad is really muddy now. It's lost all clarity. I mean, it's a nice groove, but it's not that busy. So we should be able to find a better way. Okay, let's take a closer look at series mode. One of the least exciting but most valuable uses for series mode is a bandpass filter, a way to make your pad sit better in a mix. Okay, but now the pad's too thin. I don't like how the um, envelope is affecting the high-pass filter. 
So let's take care of that by patching um, independent filters. So I'm going to patch envelope out of the filter envelope envelope generator into an attenuator, out of the attenuator into cutoff 2, and turn envelope amount off on the filter. So the high pass filter is static and the envelope is just modulating the low pass. Okay, that's already better than it was a second ago. Let's experiment with spacing. Now, that's too thin for the patch on its own. And now it's close to where it was with the low pass. Got a bit of resonance to brighten it up. Now, I like it with spacing at zero. Let's hear it in context. Fun little groove with the Mutable Instruments um, palette. Okay, let's try spacing. So in context, with a little less lows, this sits a lot better. It's okay there. Muddy. Just right. So with your filter in series mode, you might end up saving yourself a lot of time when it comes time to mix. Still got the reverb going and have lost a lot of the mud in the low mids. Much easier to mix. Or play live. All right, for this patch, we're gonna get a sine wave by getting the filter to self-oscillate. Just crank up resonance. There's our sine. Okay, the filter's still in series mode, but I'm only using the low-pass filter at the moment. Uh, let's crank up key tracking. Works pretty well. Let's see if we can get it in tune. Because it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna compare it to an oscillator here. It's easier to hear if I put this down the octave. Good. Tracks pretty well. Okay, on to the fun part of the patch. I'm going to use the envelope to modulate the pitch of our um, sine oscillator. So patching envelope out into an attenuator, into a molt, and then from the molt into the cutoff. So the pitch has changed because it's being modulated by the envelope, so I get it close to C again. There, cool. And, uh, oh yeah, key tracking's still working, but watch what happens if I increase release. So what we're hearing is the sustain and release values of the envelope modulating the pitch of our VCO. Since we're using the filter as a VCO, with a key depressed, the filter cutoff, which is how we tune our VCO, is resting at the sustain value of our envelope. When I release a key, the filter cutoff drops to the value of the filter cutoff knob. When I increased the release time on the amp envelope, the VCA was open long enough for us to hear the second pitch. So in other words, we can get two different notes with every key press and release. Cool. Let's put the matrix in drone mode and work on tuning our two pitches. So this attenuator here is controlling the amount of envelope modulation going to the filter. So in other words, it will control the pitch as well. But so will the sustain. Sustain's a little bit easier to deal with. Put this back to where it was. Okay, I think that's about a fifth, so we'll leave it at that. So let's set up our other filter to do the same thing. So out of the mold into an attenuator, out of the attenuator into the cutoff of um, filter one. And let's crank up resonance on filter one. And we can tune with spacing. That's a sound I haven't heard in a while. Sounds like a busy signal. Now if I hit a key, we can tune our key depressed or envelope sustain pitch for um, VCF1 with this attenuator. Since the cutoff knob is pretty much in the center, we're getting pretty good range with this attenuator, so we can get a lot of different intervals if we want it. But 
but I think I like it here. Octaves, and then thirds. That's cool, but let's go back to that minor thirds busy signal. And let's try it with the arpeggiator and a little bit of delay. Cool. And um, let's modulate the delay with the CV out of the arpeggiator, so um, more feedback as we go higher. It's pretty cool, sort of 1950s sci-fi type stuff. Okay, I'm going to show you something else that I like about this patch. Uh, but first, let's change the tuning a bit. We're going to go back to the um, octaves for the key depressed sound. Nice. Cool, I like that. I got a little sidetrack though. So the thing I wanted to show you is if we go into low pass mode, now we've got stereo of course, but release will act like portamento. Really like that. Now it does the same thing in high pass mode, but it's kind of gritty. Cool, I think I like that one better. Let's play around. Okay, we've got another series mode filter patch. Let's hear this one on its own. Listen to that high pass, squeeze the sound. Love it. As you hear, there's a lot of filter modulation in this one. I'm gonna quickly take it apart and we'll go through it step by step. Using all four oscillators and they're all square waves, all in the same octave and they're all tuned in unison. All same value on the mixer at low volumes to avoid distortion. I'll show you what I mean. The mixer on the matriarch can saturate it easily, especially with pulse waves. If you want a clear tone, you've really got to keep the values low on the mixer. Remember in series mode, the high pass filter's cutoff is controlled by spacing. Resonance 1 affects the high pass filter. The low pass filter cutoff is controlled by cutoff, but both are linked. We only have one filter envelope knob, which will affect both filters, so we keep that at zero if we want independent envelope modulation. So again, going to use this attenuator to control the cutoff of filter 2, patch attenuator out into cutoff 2 in. And as you can hear with the cutoff knob at 2K, I still have plenty of cutoff range with the attenuator. Still getting a little saturation. Let's turn down some of these oscillators a tiny bit. Part of the Matrix charm is the grittiness, but I do want this to be as clean as I can get it. Okay, I want to modulate the cutoff with the envelope, so I'm going to use a passive uh, inline attenuator again. 
patching out of the envelope, out of the amp envelope into CV input on our attenuator. Now the attenuation knob controls envelope amount. That's full, it's too much. Let's roll it back. Maybe a little less. That's good. Sounds like one of the oscillators is in the wrong octave. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to set up filter modulation for the high pass filter. In this case, I don't need direct physical independent control over the cutoff of filter 1. So I'll use another inline attenuator and patch directly from the filter envelope out into the cutoff in on filter 1. And again, just adjusting envelope filter modulation amount with my attenuator. So again, you can hear that sustain is affecting the filter resting place, I guess you'd call it, with keys depressed. I like it there. We've got a long attack on the filter envelope, so you can hear that high pass filter sweep at the beginning. I actually like this patch just the way it is, but let's set up some more modulation. So I'm going to use this triangle LFO here and patching it into an attenuator, obviously controlling the LFO amount, into a molt, and from the molt into the pulse width modulation of oscillators 2 and 4, and then into the other molt and into the pulse width modulation CV input of 1 and 3. And right away, I'm glad I did this modulation. That actually sounds really cool. We're getting into some CS80 type sounds. So right now, I'm obviously manually adding the modulation amount as I play. I really like that sound. So let's take a, um, another passive molt and I'll patch out of the um, filter envelope into this malt. These passive malts are about five bucks, totally worth the money. And into the CV control in on the attenuator and back again out of the malt into our high pass filter so we keep our modulation. That's cool. Now sustain on the filter envelope will affect both the high pass filter cutoff as well as our LFO modulation amount. So we can just dial in a sound we like. Nice, I like that. So I've also got the uh, sine wave LFO patched directly into an attenuator and from there into the VCA CV input for some VCA modulation. Turn that up. Actually, I'm going to unplug the um, triangle LFO so we can clearly hear the VCA modulation. Nice, that same tremolo sound we got earlier. You know what, let's see what happens if we patch the envelope filter amount into this CV input. Nice, I really like that both LFOs are at different tempos getting kind of polyrhythmic modulation. Okay, I've got another output here on my mold, so I might as well patch um, the envelope back into the CV control for the LFO. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. But uh, let's try some other exper oops, uh, let's try some other experiments. Let's patch the envelope in right in on the LFO. Turn up some delay too. Cool. I actually really like that rate modulation. Let's try it in duophonic mode. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of chorusy, even more CS80 like. All right, 
right, that's that patch. We'll call that a CS80 pad. Let's move on to the next. This giant pad patch has obviously got a lot of movement from filter modulation. First up, set VCA mode to amp envelope and paraphony to four voice. Let's go through the patch starting with the oscillators. All oscillators are at the moment set to eight foot. The whole foot measurement thing by the way uh, for oscillator octave is a throwback to pipe length on a pipe organ. Anyway, um, they're all in the same octave, but feel free to mess around with that. Uh, it can sometimes lead to some really cool sounds. I've got oscillators 1 and 3 set to square waves and oscillators 2 and 4 set to narrow pulse. There's pulse width modulation from the mod bank uh, set with the mod wheel. I like having the pulse waves at different widths so you can get a variety of tonal colors, uh, especially with narrow pulses, which uh, will cut out if they receive a wide range of pulse width modulation. Adds to the movement. In the mixer, we've got all oscillators at the same volume at around 10 o'clock. The manual says saturation occurs just past 12, but I think really it's closer to 10 o'clock. So I'm just on the verge. Also have a little bit of noise in this patch. It helps with the filter sweeps, adds an airiness to the sound. Moving on to the filter. In series mode once again with cutoff at the center position around one kilohertz and spacing also centered. That's because both filters are being independently modulated, so as we discovered in the last video, uh, if you want full range from both filters, you need to have the cutoff and spacing centered. I've got a little bit of resonance on the high-pass filter and a bit more on the low-pass filter. No keyboard filter tracking, and again, because we want independent modulation, envelope amount is also at zero. All right, let's take a look at filter modulation. The high-pass filter is being modulated by the filter envelope generator. Envelope out is patched to an attenuator and then into the CV input for the cutoff. The amount of envelope modulation is being modulated by the triangle LFO. Rate of the LFO is around 9 o'clock, so patch the triangle LFO into the CV input for the attenuator. The alternate square wave LFO, which of course is the same rate as the triangle LFO, because they're actually the same LFO, um, is syncing the rate of the modulation bus LFOs. The Modbus LFO is set to stepped triangle. I did a video a while back that looks into the modulation waves pretty closely, so you might want to check that out. Anyway, uh, wave out of the Modbus to the attenuator in, and out of this attenuator to the cutoff CV input for the low-pass filter. Here's where things get a bit tricky. The amp envelope out is patched into this other attenuator, which is then patched to the CV input of the attenuator, which is controlling the Modbus LFO amount modulating the low-pass filter. So, the envelope is modulating the amount of step triangle LFO modulation. Okay, let's take a look at the envelope generators. Envelope 1, which is again modulating the high pass filter, is set to zero attack, medium decay at around 11 o'clock, and medium release. Sustain is pretty low, so that means we'll get about a second long high pass sweep as we depress the keys. The release, of course, makes sure it also takes about a second for the cutoff to return to its resting position or knob position after the key release. Envelope 2 has a long attack, long decay, and even higher sustain value. This envelope is modulating the amount of step triangle LFO sent to the low pass filter. So have a close listen to those bleeps and bloop sounds from the uh, step triangle LFO and hear how the envelope is affecting them. But that's not all this envelope is doing. Of course, it's internally normal to the VCA, so it's also affecting the volume of the entire patch. And of course we're using some of the Matrix secret sauce, the delay, to add warmth and depth. All knobs are about halfway up with spacing slightly offset for some stereo delay. Uh, mix is around 11 o'clock. And that's it. Try playing around with the values of the attenuators and the mod wheel. Those are fun ways to mess around with this patch. Enjoy!
Okay, for this patch, I'm going to use filter 1 as a VCO and filter 2 as a low pass gate. So I'm patching out of filter 1 to the input of filter 2. And I'm keeping the filter in double low pass or stereo mode. This is another mono patch, so I'm patching out of VCF2 to the input of VCA1, so both outputs are getting signal. That way I can get stereo delay. Okay, like I said, filter 1 is going to be our oscillator, so let's fire up the resonance and get a sine wave going. Yep, that's a sine wave, all right. Okay, uh, let's turn up key tracking and see how this thing tracks. My scope's a little out of sync, but oh well, you can still see it. We've already talked about this a lot, but cutoff 2 is linked to the spacing knob. So if I turn the cutoff, it's going to alter the pitch of my oscillator, which we don't want if we want to use this as a low-pass gate. So we need to set up independent control of filter 2, patch an attenuator into the VCF cutoff, and as you can see, if I turn the attenuator, it's changing the cutoff and getting rid of our sine wave, but not changing the pitch. So that worked, great. So the reason the sine wave disappeared is because the cutoff is now below the fundamental frequency of our VCO. So now let's patch an envelope into the CV input of our attenuator. So I want this to sound plucky like a Buchla low pass gate. So turn sustain off and really, really short envelope times. That's a bit too plucky, let's change that. Now we're cooking. So on the scope, you can see our envelope shape. Nice and plucky, really like it. Let's raise the cutoff. Cool. And you can see that now we're getting more of a logarithmic envelope. Okay, let's get the arpeggiator going and hear our makeshift low pass gate in action. Now just experiment a bit with the cutoff as well as the envelope. Nice, that's more Buchla style. Now by using this envelope amount knob, we can use the filter envelope to introduce some VCO modulation. If we're careful, we can get some water drip sounds. Just the tiniest little bit. That's kind of cool. Let's try it. Let's try attack. That's more what I'm after. There we go. Might be a bit much. Good. Let's add some delay. Okay, I forgot to mention before, make sure that your VCA is in drone mode. But speaking of the VCA, uh, let's try to compare our um, makeshift low-pass gate with the VCA. Okay, here's the low-pass gate. We're in drone mode. Now I'm going to switch. That's the sound of the VCA with the same envelope. Low-pass gate. And VCA, same envelope. So it is quite a bit different sound. Okay, instead of using our sine wave, let's try passing a um, triangle wave through this. So I'm just gonna use oscillator one, turn it up in the mixer. Oh boy, that sounds nice. What the hell, let's add in the sine wave. Try triangle octave lower. Oh, it's a bit out of tune. We can tune our sine with the spacing knob. Yeah, it's kind of Buchla-ish. Let's go full west coast and add in some FM modulation. So patching oscillator 4 into an attenuator and out of the attenuator into linear FM in. 
Okay, let's turn off the delay for a second and increase the brightness of our low pass gate by raising the decay on our envelope. And we'll tune up that sine wave again. Sounds good, but let's try raising the cutoff with the attenuator. Yeah, we're getting that little sustain or, or, or bleed that you get on the Buchla low pass gates. Yeah, it's not exactly the same as a real low pass gate, but sounds pretty darn good. Alright, to start this next patch off, I've got the filter in low pass mode and I already have attenuators patched into the CV inputs for both filters. I've also got a dead patch patched into delay in one, so the delay will only affect the right side or filter two. Although the filter's in stereo mode, this is going to be a mono patch with two independent voices, so I'm patching wave out of oscillators one and two into a molt, and from the molt, we'll patch into VCF1 input on the filter. That will be our first voice. Voice one is going to be our bass sound. Oscillators one and two are in octaves. Two is a square wave, and one is a saw. Oscillators 3 and 4 are going to be voice 2, so turn those up in the mixer. They're automatically routed to filter 2 input through the mixer. Oscillator 3 is a pulse wave. Oscillator 4 is narrow pulse. I want to tune these. Turn on drone mode and tune oscillator 4 up a fifth. Great. All right, I'm going to turn down oscillators 3 and 4 so we can have a closer listen to the cutoff of filter 1. Okay, it works like it's supposed to, but let's uh, modulate this with the filter envelope. So patch filter envelope into CV input on the attenuator. Yeah, that's too much filter modulation, so I'm going to patch an inline attenuator in between. Yeah, it's good about there. Nice. Lower the cutoff a bit. A bit more envelope. Let's try a bit more sustain and a bit longer attack. Oh. Getting there. Lower cutoff, less envelope. There. I think with the cutoff really low, I think that's the sound I want. And I'll detune oscillator 2 just a little bit, so we get a little bit of coursing and that old-school analog flavor. Yeah. Okay, let's work on voice 2, so I'm going to unplug from the... Um, um, not the attenuator, plug that back. Um, the molt, not the attenuator. So now we hear just oscillators three and four, and I'm patching out of the LFO in the CV input on the attenuator, which is controlling the filter two cutoff. Let's turn sustain on the amp down a bit. And uh, slow down the LFO. That's still too much modulation, so I'm going to patch that into this attenuator over here and back into the CV and put on the attenuator. It's already better, but let's lower it a little bit more. And I think I want the sustain of the amp to be a bit lower too. Okay, let's patch the uh, voice one back into the malt so we have both voices playing together. Cool. So Play around with envelope times a bit. And this time I actually want the saturation from the mixer, so I'm really going to crank up oscillators three and four in the mixer to get that warm distortion sound. And I think a little bit of resonance would be nice on filter two. 
Great, these patches coming together. Okay, so now let's get the amp envelope to modulate the amount of uh, filter modulation going to the low pass filter. So using an attenuator again, patching in the CV input. <laughs> more adjustments with this envelope to get the sound I'm after. A bit longer decay and shorter attack. Let's try more filter modulation. Oh, that's too much. That's good, like subtle vibrato. And lower the cutoff for filter one with the sustain. Oh, don't like that volume bump without the filter, so turn attack up there too. I do have a sound in mind, that's why I'm taking my time with these envelopes. Just small adjustments can sometimes really make a big deal in the sound. And let's get that secret sauce in there. Still not quite right, I think I need a little less modulation. Other times when I'm making these videos, I'll cut out this experimental stage of the patch, but I guess it's kind of important that you see all the different subtle variations we can get just from these tiny little knob movements. It's important to practice your modular playing. Still not happy with Voice 2's modulation amount. We should experiment a little more. Tricky finding the right spot. Gah. Okay, let's get rid of the delays. I can really hear it. I think it's the envelope, so I'm gonna change that a bit, lower the sustain value. Okay. the low voice to cut out like that but that does sound cool okay i think this is the way to go just keep the key depressed and dial in the settings for the sustain great okay sounding good but i think just a tiny bit less of the uh, lfo modulating filter too Let's speed it up a bit okay yeah Let's just see what happens if we uh, mess with the oscillators a little bit. Okay, I like that. So we've got two square waves instead of a narrow pulse now. A little bit warmer. Yeah, it sounds like a bass and two clarinets, kind of like a Steve Reich. I dig it. Okay, hopefully you're still awake or still watching this video. Because I think I finally got the sound I was after. And one more alteration. Going to put the oscillators 3 and 4 up an octave. And I think we have it. Beautiful. Great. I don't know what to call this patch. Um, maybe bass with the ghosts of clarinets. But it's a great example of um, using a low pass filter in a mono patch to get two independent voices with filter modulation. It's a much more boring name. I like the ghost one. Okay, I'm going to shut up and play this patch for a little bit. And hopefully you like it as much as I do.
Here's a variation of the patch we just put together, but this one obviously uses the arpeggiator. This patch is in stereo mode, but like the last patch, is best mixed mono. Still have the matriarch in unison mode, there's still a dead patch in delay 1, so only voice 2 is affected by the delay, and delay is synced to the arpeggiator. Like the first patch, we have two voices with independent filters. Voice 1 is again oscillators 1 and 2, molted and sent directly to VCF 1 in. This time I have oscillator sync turned on, and oscillator 2 is hard sync to oscillator 1. Oscillator 2 is an octave above oscillator 1 and detuned slightly to get some nice harmonics. Oscillators 3 and 4 are both pulse waves, but with different widths. Oscillator 4 is tuned an octave and a fifth above oscillator 3. They both go through the mixer and are internally directed to VCF 2N because we have the other two oscillators patched into VCF 1. Like I said, I've got the filter in stereo mode again, or I guess in this case we should call it double low pass. Spacing is at zero and master cutoff just under 2 kilohertz. I have resonance on filter 2 up almost halfway. Again, envelope amount is at zero because we're modulating the filters independently. Filter 1's cutoff is being controlled by attenuator 1 here, and I have the cutoff well below 2 kHz. The cutoff is being modulated by the filter envelope generator, which is being attenuated with a passive mixer, and patched into the CV input of the attenuator, like we've done already with a bunch of the other patches. Filter 2's cutoff is controlled by attenuator 3 here, which at the moment is set at 0, uh, so cutoff is the same as the cutoff knob on the filter, just under 2 kHz, but I'll be playing with this knob throughout the demo. Attenuator 3, so cutoff for filter number 2, is being modulated by both the stepped triangle LFO, which is being attenuated itself by attenuator 2, and the amplitude um, envelope generator. In this case, the Splix is acting as a passive mixer and controls the balance of the two modulation sources sent to modulate the cutoff. And that's the patch. What I like about this patch is that voice 1 through filter 1 is relatively consistent throughout, but voice 2, the higher voice, cuts in and out at random intervals. That's because filter 2 is being so heavily modulated, it's in a sense acting almost like a low pass gate. A lot of the time the filter cutoff is well below the pitch being played, so that's why it's in and out, and it kind of acts like an accent to the consistent bass line. I dig it. So if you're still watching, here's a little teaser from the upcoming part three. We're going to do some parallel patches. We're going to get extra synthy with parallel filter mode. and we'll try processing external audio with the matriarch. does it for this video i hope you enjoyed it or hope you learned something uh, part three will be coming up in a couple of weeks thanks for watching